Today I've got a fun problem from Cambridge University's Maths Entrance Exam, otherwise known as STEP. This is a two-part problem, but I'm actually going to be skipping over part one and just diving straight into part two. The question concerns the inequality, the integral from 0 to pi of f of x squared dx is less than or equal to 0 to pi, the integral from 0 to pi of f prime of x squared dx. And as I say, I'll be skipping over part one. Part one is just um, a chance for the person sitting the exam to explore this inequality and just do earn some basic marks from some basic calculations. Part two is what I'm interested in. We're now allowed to assume that this inequality is true for any differentiable function f where f of 0 equals f of pi equals 0. So in other words, it has roots at 0 and pi. Um, we want to set f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are suitably chosen, and we want to show that pi squared is less than or equal to 10. And then by setting f of x equals p times sine over half x plus q times cos over half x plus r, where p, q, and r are suitably chosen, we want to obtain another inequality for pi. And we want to know which of these inequalities is a better estimate for pi squared. OK, let's start with part two. So we, this is kind of the first part. We want to deal with this quadratic and we want to choose A, B and C suitably. Well, if we're allowed to assume this fact here, ideally we want f of zero and f of pi to be zero. Well, if f of zero is zero, that just means C is zero. And if f of pi is zero, well, that means that A times pi squared plus B times pi equals zero. And if we just cancel out a pi, that means a pi plus b is zero. But we can actually go one step further. If I look at this inequality here, I notice that if I multiply f by a constant number, let's say 10, so if this was 10 f of x here, I'd get an extra factor of 100 on the left side. But on the right hand side, I'd also get an extra factor of 100. So I can scale these functions f of x up and down as I please. So here I can assume without loss of generality that a just equals 1. And so I have pi plus b equals 0. And so p, b, sorry, is minus pi. And so this function that I want is x squared minus pi x. So this is a function that satisfies f of x equals 0 when x is 0 or pi. And so therefore, it must satisfy this inequality according to our assumption. So the integral from 0 to pi of x squared minus pi x all squared dx must be less than or equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the derivative of this, which would be 2x minus pi um, squared dx. And now if you rearrange this, I'm not going to evaluate each of these integrals. They're pretty straightforward to evaluate. You just expand and integrate. Um, you're going to end up, once you simplify, getting pi squared is less than or equal to 10. I could show that. And in an exam, you would have to show all the details for that. But I'm being a bit lazy. And also, I think it'd be pretty boring to watch me evaluate some straightforward integrals. So let's consider that part done. Let's look at the next bit. We want to now consider f of x to be p times sine of a half x plus q times cos of a half x plus r. Again, we could have some scaling on p, q, and r. So in fact, we only need to work out two of them. And again, we're going to use the fact that f of 0 and f of pi are both 0. So let's plug in 0 for this. So f of 0, that would just be p times sine of a half 0, which is 0, uh, q times cos of 0, which is 1. So we get q plus r has to equal 0. And then if we plug in pi, we're going to get something similar, but we're going to get p plus r is 0. Um, and we can see a very clear solution to this is um, what p, q, and r all being equal to 0. But let's say we we, we, we don't want that the trivial solution here. We want them to be non-zero. So maybe we can make p equal 1, q equal 1, and r equal minus 1. That will solve this here. OK. So um, now if we use this function, we uh, get this. And again, if you just plug this all into your inequality, so plugging this in, evaluating again, they're very straightforward integrals, you're going to get that pi is less than or equal to 22 over 7. Again, I'm going to spare you all the details of going through this. It's not super exciting. And now I guess the question is, well, then which one of these inequalities is better? Well, this one's pi squared is less than or equal to 10. This one here we, is equivalent to pi squared being less than or equal to 22 over 7 squared, and that's 484 over 49. But 484 over 49 is very clearly less than 10, because 484 is less than 490. And so this means that pi squared is, um, th this second one must be a better bound, because it gives us an even tighter upper bound for what pi squared can be. And that would be our answer for this. 
Of course, in a real step exam, you'd have to provide a lot more detail than I have here. But I think these short videos seem to do a little bit better in terms of people watching them. Um, no one wants to see me doing some boring calculations. Uh, if you do want me to go into a bit more depth on those calculations, leave a comment down below. But thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.